Hello. <lacht> Good morning. Wait a second. Let's turn this off. Good morning, guys. How's it going? Interesting. Oh, the bot is not started. Huh, did I not restart my computer? Interesting. Are you a PowerShell pro programmer now, Cakes? Um, yeah. I am. Um, I just added, I, added, I had to sort out a bunch of stuff. But yes, I am now. I had to basically say no to the cashier job. And then say hello and to the, the other job, yes. Which, you know... Was a very tough decision for me, actually. Because... The cool thing about the cashier job is that I just go there, I turn off my brain and I do the job. I don't have to do any thinking at all, right? I can just two-header the job and it's fine. It's mostly muscle stuff, right? While... And the other job, I have to use my brain and I'm already using my brain so much here. You know, to the point where oftentimes I have decision fatigue and I'm exhausted from all of the thinking that I do. You yeah, know. Until someone uses cash. No, no, that's fine. You know, like, listen. So it was a very tough decision and I still don't know if I've made the right decision or not. I still don't know. It will, time will tell only. Told you you need a new brain. No, that's fine. That's fine. You know, when you work your brain all day, physical labor just feels better to do. That's all. You know. Subcakes. Hey, my gets up. And hello, cheeseburgers. Hello, real super cool. Good morning, guys. Nike Dev. Now, wait. What commands does the bot have? The bot has exclamation mark commands, I think. Hello. Yeah. I'm kind of in the same position when I program in my free time and program for work too and it's definitely taking its toll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, it is. But for me, it's not only programming, right? It's like making decisions in general. Like, okay, how do I uh, make my stream in a way so that I could turn it into YouTube videos? What type of YouTube videos are best? How can I like edit my YouTube videos a bit better? You know, how can I make sure that I make progress on the game? Stuff like that. Will you do some react any content today? I think we can, yeah. I still haven't posted the Jonathan Blow reaction, you know, uh, where he talks about OpenGL. I, the video, I think, is done. I just don't have a thumbnail yet. I think the video is done. Let me double check. Mm, YouTube, final edits, Cake77. Is OpenGL worth it? Yeah, so I have it already done. But I don't think I have a thumbnail for it yet. So yeah, we're gonna do some, some React content. And this is what I, you know... The cool thing about the Rewe job, or the, the job as a cashier. I know the people there. Uh, you know, talking to these people is like refreshing for me. I can be on my feet, walking around. I can also sit. It's right next to me. It's a little less money, man. And it's not like programming related. But still, man, these things are all like cool, cool things. These are cool people, you know. I'm one of the, let's say, I feel like I belong there. Even though like, yeah, I have, I, I usually program a lot, you know. And these people probably don't know much about programming. But still, you know, it's, yeah. Just feels very good. Very tough decision, man. Very. I'm still. I'm still hanging in in the decision, man. I, I called in. 
I called the boss, you know, and told him, but man. Yeah, I'm still thinking about it, man. Let me double check. Did I upload it already? No, I didn't upload it yet, so I have to upload it later. Good morning, Alkmash, my man. How's it going, bro? Hi, bro. Hello there, Peter. Uh, Piotr? Piotr? I guess I call you Daniel. It's easier. Hello, Daniel on YouTube. Welcome, bro. Hey, Adrian. Good morning in free space. Do you know what you can, Jonathan, blow cakes? These nuts? Do you shout at them? No. I... I never had any I never had any issues with these people there. They are all friendly. They are a little bit tough sometimes, but that's normal. Like, you know, when you work as a cashier, you you start to become quite like let's say tough, not toxic. You know, and some people are just tough to be around, but you you got to be tough yourself, you know. You got to learn. It's okay for me. Okay, Daniel, that's nice. You just gotta learn to to like deal with these people, and I like that a lot. You know, I hate this form formal bullshit. You know, it's soft. I hate soft speaking. Like what I mean by that is, um, basically saying how it is, right? What you you couldn't do it on the internet, right? It's that you would get cancelled immediately, or you know, people would feel feel like bad for the other person. Like, for example, to give you an example, I, I I was working there, I think, five years ago or something like that. And I had a co-worker, a girl, not a girl, like a, she was, I think, 20, 22, something like that. Right. And we both got along very well. Right. We talked a lot to each other, but she was like, I wouldn't say weak, but she couldn't like stand up for herself. Right. And so there was this older woman that was quite tough. Right. And she would talk to her and say well you have to do it like this you can't let do you can't let them do that right you have to be more more on edge and like why are you not doing this like basically quite aggressive right and uh, she just couldn't say anything right she was like stunned and I, for me it's just like i always had something to talk to say to her back or like uh, on a f on a level where it's like we are like equal, right? Like she, she, there was some sort of mutual respect, right? And she just couldn't handle this type of, of talking or like, it's, it's not really like blaming the other person, but it's more like tough speech, if that makes sense. Which, uh, yeah, she, she got very quiet and sad about it, right? She talked to me about it, but I told her like, you're just going to say something. You can't just stand there and take it, right? Because she's going to keep doing it because she knows she can do it with you. You know, so yeah, but I like that. I like that because it's more direct and open, you know, there's no questions. So yeah, <clears throat> tough decision, very tough decision. The internet is full of losers, we, uh, we know, yeah. more assertive, yeah, I guess more assertive, something like that. Anyways, let's see here. Uh, the idea for today is, by the way, that I do a little bit of programming, but then I play Last Epoch until I die, because I think Path of Exile comes out basically on Friday, right? Oh yeah, so it releases in four days. We have to finish up Last Epoch today, and I have to get the video out. And then we need to start doing some Path of Exile content. Do you have any release game on Steam? I would uh, check it. Uh, no, I have a game on Steam, but that is basically this game right here that we'll be working on in, in a second. It's a tower defense game. It, like it basically in inspired by balloons, you can say. Looks something like this. You can place your heroes and then if you have enough points, you generate the points using these bad boys right here. And then if you have enough points, you can skill abilities. And these abilities, they are not that balanced yet. I have to balance them a little bit better. But yeah. Hello, Sturdy Post. How's it going? How was your first day on the side job? I didn't do the job yet. It starts on the first of or the second of April, so one day after Easter. So this is my game right now. 
And I'm currently working on improving the abilities and basically... Yeah, we need to implement the poison cloud next. This one right here. <coughs> Unrelated, but let's say I have a selection of three plus different things. And I want to change the focus on the things by pressing tab. What is the word for it? I can only come up with toggle, but toggle switch. Yeah, cycle, loop. Loop through. Cycle the selection. Yeah, looping. Switch could work. Do, re do you already know your working hours? Does it change the stream schedule? No, it doesn't. Because my working hours will be after the stream. So let's say for today, I stream until 4 p.m. Let's say that, right? I'll stream probably longer or shorter, depending on when I die in last epoch. Then after that, I would go and do the job for like four or five hours. And that's that would be two times a week. Balance the skills and ship it. I need more skills. First, I need to implement them and that they work. After that, changing the data of the abilities uh, is very easy. You just turn a bunch of knobs and it's updated in real time in the game. So what do you live on? I live on YouTube, streaming, and now my side job. And for the longest time before that, my wife has been supporting me as well. And for like about a year. My wife has been supporting me for about a year. I'm very thankful and grateful for that. And before then, I had a job. So I had saved up money. And uh, after that money ran out, I also got supported a little bit for a short period of time by the government because I worked before. And then you get money when you get to unemployment because I quit my job for this, which was, in my opinion, the best decision of my life. I should have probably not done it earlier, but this was the best decision of my life, 100%. And I, I do not want to go back. Um, I'm not that successful as other people, you know, I know that. Uh, streaming and YouTube and stuff like this takes a long time. Also making games takes a long time. Could be more successful, but I'm still happy I can do what I do. Uh, you know, and that is awesome. I want to keep doing this. Yep. What's the name of the game you're making? I enjoy a good TD game. It is called Tangy Defense. Uh, Tangy for Tangerine, short for Tangerine, and Defense is, yeah. Uh, but I don't have a logo and like a uh, big picture yet, if that makes sense. Like a thumbnail. Need to work the, on that as well. Uh, looks like uh, there is a like a somewhat ready logo. And I think I'll have to just finish it myself. And I will do that when I get close to a version that I can put on Steam again. Right now the version on Steam is really bad. You want to see the version on Steam right now? Let, let me show you. It's called Cakes TD Steam, and it's it looks really bad. I don't even track the wish lists because the page looks so terrible that yeah, this is the old version. It's like a year year old. I still had this terrible tactics menu. This is completely gone now. Yeah, I made so many. Yeah, and this one also. Like, I didn't even have the skill tree in the game. And then, you know, choosing a team, level 9, level 10. Now I have basically, like, in balloons. I have these bad boys right here. And I can place as many of them as I want to, right? I don't have to have, like, so many changes. And these guys right here, I guess they, it doesn't use it? Why are you not using the ability? You should be using that. Yeah, I guess I need to implement the ability as well. Oh yeah, also, I guess we need to fix this. We do need to turn this into a button. Let me do that real quick. We'll do some React content in a second here. Yeah. I saw some React suggestions. You, But you made this game? This is still awesome? Yeah, I did, I did. It's all in C++. Thank you, man. Lazy uh, Zombro. Nice. BR for, ri for wife? What does BR mean? No, she's, she's been very supportive here. Very patient. And I know that this this type of journey does take longer. I recently saw a post by Primogen, who is very successful now, 
but it took him six years to get to where he is now. And if I take that into perspective, I'm like two years and a couple of months in. So there's still four years for me to go. What happened to the Godot game? I just couldn't finish it, man. I just couldn't. I Every time I worked on Godot, I... <laughs> I just wasn't having a great time in the engine. The engine is not for me, man. Listen, like the UI is really annoying to deal with. Then we have a bunch of bugs that don't work. Uh, you know, basic features don't work. Uh, the bugs hold you back long times. And it's just, it's a struggle, man. For me, for me, right? I'm pretty sure others have found their listen yeah they haven't in godot but in my opinion the engine takes a little bit more time to be production ready and production ready i mean you make a high quality game in godot from start to finish and you don't encounter too many let's say game breaking bugs or engine breaking bugs right if that makes any sense by game-breaking bugs, I mean the bugs that hold you back on your progress, right? Basic stuff that should be working. And they need to fucking rework the UI. It's atrociously bad. It's insane, right? I was searching for a field called scale in the particle system, and it didn't show that to me. It was there. It was literally called scale, but it didn't show that to me. And when the search function in a terrible UI doesn't work... That is supposed to be the one thing that helps you navigate that trash, trash UI. And I, I know I'm being harsh, but this is the truth, right? I'm just speaking the truth. Then uh, you got a problem there, right? That is just my honest opinion. And so I just couldn't deal with this anymore. I was getting frustrated and angry uh, literally almost every time I used it. The famous scale failure, you remember that if you right? What happened to the Vulcan game? We switched over How from Vulcan to OpenGL. Welcome message thing. How do you disable the welcome message? I need to ask Abbeth about that. Let me double check. I'm going to ask him. I don't know, actually. Okay. A search function doesn't search within the resource files? Yeah, well, then that's dumb. In my opinion. Godot is great for game jams and rapid prototyping, but terrible for actually finishing a game. I think the Unity, unfortunately, is much better. After seeing the devlog from, uh, what is it called? Ponty Pants? It's insane. Like, the difference between Unity and Godot is just ginormous. And unfortunately, the leadership of Unity has shown to be incapable of basic human thinking. But man, the engine itself for a small game, maybe I have to start recommending that again. Simply because it's much better than Godot. By a long shot. I'm just explaining why it didn't work. Yeah, okay, that's okay, but still stupid. <laughs> Hey, Uncle Gucci, good morning. It's up here, good morning. Are you making yourself a game engine? I'm kind of new here. Yes, I have made... Uh, you can Activate. also do exclamation mark engine. I am making... Oh, I have actually made a tutorial series that this engine is based around. This engine is a little bit more advanced. It does have bloom and additive lighting, stuff like additive blending. It does have a lighting system, right? For example, over here, if I turn this on and then, you know... Turn this dark, you can see that, you know, the lights do, do work, right? Let's see here. Whoops. Yeah, it does work. Advanced, yeah, yeah. Just build your own engine real quick. No, I think, in my opinion... The one thing that Godot has going for it, it starts fast.
<laughs> I think that's it. Were you working in the gaming industry? I did not know. I was working as a normal web developer before I started doing this. Looks like Godot almost. Now this is my own editor that I made. It's kind of trash. But it does everything I need to do. Right. I can edit levels and edit paths. Everything I need. You can also load different levels. Um, but most of them are not implemented yet. What's up? Hello, unknown, unknown. Good morning. We're just talking a little bit about engine stuff. Do you think it's fair to call your project an engine? It's all mixed with the game-specific code. For me, an engine should be reusable. Yes, of course. You know why? Because I just need to delete the game CPP file, wipe it, and then the game... .h file, wipe that. And we got ourselves an empty engine. Right? It would still work. I, what do I have to delete or, or clear? I have to clear this file, which is the game specific stuff, right? Prove it? I'm not proving it. I'm not wasting my time. I don't need to prove anything to anyone. Go fuck off, bitch. Eat a dick. The only thing that I need to keep is this and the definition of game state. Right here. Uh, this, all of this stuff, and probably the bump allocator in the game state. But all of this stuff right here can go away, except for a couple of, like, probably this and this. And then maybe, maybe these, these are options, right? They could probably extract, they should probably be extracted out, but yeah. It's definitely not as fast as in a normal engine like Unity, where you make a new game, but it's still reasonably fast to make a new game in this, and I've done this in the past. Thank you very much for following, Rocco. Are you trying to make Godot Engine now? No, I'm not trying to make Godot Engine. Absolutely not. I'm trying to finish my game. And actually, I wanted to do something really quickly. That is in the hero bar. Yeah. Gotcha, bitch. In the Diablo bar. Let me find that really quickly. The buttons at the bottom. The skill icons. Yeah. Where is it? Also, I wanted to change the music really quickly. Oh, guys, I fixed it, by the way. I fixed the stupid issue when I watched, let's say, a YouTube video, right? Let's click on anything. Let's maybe this, right? This is... Uh, Hi, I'm Chris Wilson Hi. from Grinding. Let's make it really small. Look, watch. When I press music pause... Eh? What the fuck? Is my script not running? Oh, my script is not running. Wait a second. Eh? <sighs> what is it called again? Uh, wait, wait. What is it called again? Um, ah, the inputs. The joy to key. There we go. Okay, should be running now. So you see the video running, right? Watch. It's no longer targeting Firefox. I can start. It works. It was so annoying every time. It finally works, man. Let's give myself a like, you know. Hey, why is it zero? Stop tracking me, okay? Stop tracking my IP address, okay? Let me give me my own likes. Anyways, I wanted to change that. It's so it's so good that I can finally do this. Ah. Cakes, can you please not funk up one single thing? It's getting stale now. Oh, shit, your fucking mouth. Also, I need to start this auto hotkey script. 
Looks like I tried to restart my computer before the stream. It didn't really restart, but it closed a bunch of applications. Let me double check if this works. Hmm. Did it work? Did not work. Now it works. There we go. Okay, cool. Does work. Uh, let's see. German is upper house. The Bundesrat cleared the way to partially legalize cannabis on Friday. That That's it, GG. Yeah, I saw a man walking by the street today smoking cannabis. Uh, Didymos, thank you very much for following. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Oof. Oh, boy. Uh, but there's still a small window of opportunity for the companies to do business with recreational cannabis in the medium term. The state is planning to allow commercial supply chains in selected towns and districts. If these pilot projects go ahead in Berlin, Cologne and other places, they could bring in additional millions via the cash registers of special shops. Details of these pilot projects will be revealed in the summer. People who want to stay in the market need to have patience in a long term. Oh god, okay. It's not legal until April 1st. Yeah, but that's like a week away, bro. Why do you use pointer to uh, of a bumper locator in a game state? Oh, why do I use a pointer there? Let me quickly just button to add abilities. Give me one second. I, I've, I've been all over the place. Um, Where is it? Skill icons, added abilities. Um, button recharging, energy, draw ability with socket, draw UI sprite. There we go. Do I have the button ID? I do. So I want to do button, ability, sprite ID, abilities position, then the button ID, and then the material. Color is button color. The reason why I'm doing a button here is because I can hover over buttons and then it shows me the ability description there. I hate PoE. Every gameplay is death dash dash spell dash dash spell. Hello, the critical peon. Yeah, that is true. Which is why I'm so excited about PoE 2, you know? Because that game probably changes that. Let me double check if this works. There we go. Now we can hover over these abilities. It's a bit odd that it moves down. Long cooldown on dashes. Praish. More dashing. No, no, I think it's going to be more cooldown. Any release date? I don't really have a release date. I'm just trying to be... I'm just trying to make the game as good as possible. So why do I have a pointer in the game state here? To a transient storage? Because I'm allocating this bumper locator in the main file. Where is it? Um, I have one transient storage that gets cleared every frame. Over here. And I'm just referencing this pointer. I'm making sure that I have this right here. So this is basically the one um, yeah, transient memory that I use across the entire engine. I have persistent memory and transient memory and this is the only two types of allocators that i that i use in the entire engine and i allocate them once on startup and this gets cleared the transient storage gets cleared by just setting the counter of allocations back to zero so essentially i don't even have any cost uh, in clearing my memory so if i wanted to let's say load in a file uh, that will be done during one frame. I load in the file, I get the data to the GPU, let's say, and then that gets cleared the next frame. Okay, have a nice day. I leave German culture. I watched your stream 7.5 hours in February. What am I doing with my life? 
7.5 hours? That's not that long. It's like one streaming session, I guess. But I, I don't stream that long. It's not worth it to stream that long. At least not for me at the moment. Let's see here. Um, what do we have here? Blah, 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 blah. What exactly are you complaining about here? Uh, this is capitalization. Complaining about English grammati grammatical errors of a non-native dude. Cake W, yeah. He's right though. Cakes is terrible at English, both speaking and writing. Ah, shut your mouth, bitch. Fuck off. How about this? How about you eat a dick? All right. And here. Bitch. Fuck you. Uh, even worse, a German. Ah, okay, bro. Mm hmm. Here. Bitch. All right. Let's see. Memes. Do we have any good memes? Cake 77. What is this? Clips. That's not going to be a good clip. 100%. It's not going to be a good clip. Have you ever put in the, <laughs> taken a booger out from your right nostril and then put it in your left? No, I have not. <laughs> oh my god. Yikes. Okay, bro. Hello, Jova, my man. Good morning. Yikes. You are fine at English. Thank you. I won't stream the next day, yada yada, but there's other stuff to do. Instagram? Should I click on this? Can I click on this even? You're not supposed to open that here. Is this a dude? What's up, Cake? Hey, Valigo. Holy shit, what am I looking at? Jesus. Goodness. What the fuck's going on? Yeah, like, I wonder how many asses I've seen. I'm like, damn, that's a nice ass. And it was actually a dude and some pants. Oh, God. Maybe with long hair. Holy fuck that. Yeah. Just go with it? Goodness, man. No, no, oh God. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, um, yeah, awesome. Uh, where is Discord? Here. Oh, it's on the left. Uh, yeah, Verit, uh, you find some interesting stuff, I have to say, man. Very interesting stuff, brother. Click on it! An introduction to modern CMake? Only because I know someone's gonna be triggered? <laughs> I mean, you are right. I'm already triggered by reading this. Oh no. Why do I need a build system? Because you're stupid. People love to hate build systems. No, we just love to hate CMake, bro. Just watch the talks from CppCon17. See examples of developers making the save of build systems the brunt of jokes. Yeah, because it's a joke. CMake is a joke. This is a joke. This raises the question why? Because it's dumb. Terrible documentation. Different syntax to do the same thing, not consistent, slow. Ugh. Why? Certainly, there are no shortage of problems when building. Actually, no. This is all you need, bro. Look at this. I'm building to three operating systems. 
three operating systems in a bash file. Like how many lines of code is this? 46. The major three operating systems, yeah. The major three. And it works. It's a bit more complicated, but still. And it's fast. Control shift B. Yeah, that was it. Was a bit slow, but still a little faster than what I'm used to from CMake. Now do this for a project with like 50 plus dependencies. Yeah, that's a little bit more difficult, true. But that's the problem of C++, man. You saw how easy that was in Odin? This is the biggest problem of C++ that everyone has. Different build system in different libraries, aka projects, that you need in your project. Let's say you want to have BoxTD. That is a library that has a build system that you need to work with in your build system. Right? You need to integrate that into your build system. Or at least you need to download that and then include and link it properly. If we're talking about Odin, which we tried out recently, that is much easier there. Because you just import the module. Oh god, what is CMake? Why do I need a good build system? I have one. Do any of the following apply to you? You want to avoid hard coding paths? Why? No. You need to, to build a package on more than one computer? No. You want to use CI, continuous integration? No. You need to support different operating systems? Yeah. You want to support multiple compilers? No. You want to use an IDE, but maybe not all the time? No. You want to describe how your program is structured logically? Not Okay, I don't even understand this, so no. You want to use a library? I already do. Yeah. You want to use tools like Clang Tidy? No. You want to use a debugger? Yes. So basically like 80% no. So if so, you'll benefit. So I won't even benefit. <laughs> I'm not the target audience here. Why must the answer be CMake? Why not pre-make, for example? Why not a make script? Why not a build file? Build.sh file. Also, why would you want to build on more than one computer? That's my biggest question. If you're making a software, and let's say you have a team, they should all be working on one computer, right? They shouldn't be building unless it's a game. I guess you need to build to other computers as well. So yeah, you need to build on other computers. Yeah, no, no. If you're making open source, some people work with other people. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Why do you want to support multiple compilers? Uh, you want to support multiple compilers because maybe some other compiler is faster, it creates a faster program. Uh, other than that, it's more about efficiency as far as I've seen. Otherwise, it's really a non-issue. You just use one compiler and that's it. You know, or you encounter a game breaking bug in one compiler and have to use another compiler. But this is also very rare. I remember we encountered one ginormous error. It's difficult, it's a bit difficult to explain, but if you take a look at, let's say, this UI right here, uh, me and TCAP, we both had the same issue. We were using MSVC and then we turned on optimizations. And let's say I have this window right here. It is positioned, let's say, on 200x to the right and 100y down. Yeah, 200, 100. And then inside here, I have a bunch of texts. And I would position them, let's say, 50 pixels. Let's 50, it's not, it's too much. 10 pixels to the right. It would forget about the 10 pixels and just left align this to zero because it didn't as far as i remember mm, we called a function 
called by value. So I gave the function the position by value. It's a vector 2. I gave that vector 2 by value. And then it would zero out the vector 2 because it wasn't copying over the memory into the function. It was a copy by value or call by value call that the compiler when optimizing would not copy over. It was literally a bug in the compiler. Stuff like that can happen, but it's very rare. Very, very rare. And also, like, um, yeah. So, uh, for example, I can't even switch anymore if I start using... Uh, which one was it? If I start using the C99 designator for LLVM, because this is an extension that is only present in LLVM. I couldn't even use this on MSVC. This stuff, by the way, looks a bit weird, but what this allows me is basically this. Let me find it. If I can find it. It basically allows me to do this right here. So, for example, I have an... I could even make this, I think, const. Yeah. I can make a const array of sprites. And I can say sprite white is here in the atlas. I have a texture atlas, right? And that's how big it is. And so what this allows me to do, essentially, is the following. If, let's say, oh, let's go back here. Uh, let's go to sprite white. If I happen to rearrange the order of those two sprites, this array will always be correct. Right? If I, if I don't do this right here, and I pretend that the first one is, you know, sprite white, right, if I don't do this, and then I go back to the top, then it would actually be wrong, right? So that's literally just a... No, no. Oh, no. Where, where was I? Yeah. It's like some sort of safety net. But it's only available in LLVM. When will the game be ready? I'm assuming some, sometime later this year, if I keep working on it. There are compiler-specific extensions, yes. But even if it, when you use these extensions, you're basically locking yourself into one compiler, right? Anyways, let's switch this back. Cakes, is this a promise? This is not a promise. I don't put myself under that pressure. So yeah, why must the answer be CMake? Build systems are a hot topic. Of course, there are many other options. But even a really good one, or one that reuses a... Familiar syntax can't come close to sim to CMake. Why? Support. Every IDE supports CMake. More packages use CMake than any other system. Yeah, but that doesn't make CMake a good choice. Like if, let's say you're using something bad and because everyone is using it, you're using it, it's not making it better. <laughs> it should be, it should be, we should start to work on something that is more reusable can you send me that link i'm interested uh, to learn cmake yeah sure i can send you the link of course here there we go i actually have really liked using cmake in the past i hated it i remember having to link and import sdl2 into cmake it was like a billion steps where it is literally just in actuality it's literally just a link with a DLL or a .lib file, right? You link it and then you include it. And that would be not third party, but yes, third party, let's say SDL. It is literally that simple. And in CMake, you have to specify some stupid bullshit. I remember that. It was so annoying to set up SDL2 with CMake. And that's when I stopped. So if you use a library that is designed to be included in your code, you have a choice. Make your own build system or use one of the provided ones. So for example, if I want to use SDL2 now, right? SDL2. I think I can get download. Or do we already have three? I don't know. I have not used SDL3. Download the source code. We clone it. 
gear. I guess we can only get SDR2. Source code, the latest official release here. Are you gonna load here? Yeah. Let's see. It's this one, right? Let's just see. Hello, Cakes. You are in such a good mood today. Let's talk about Zig build. <laughs> Shit the fuck. I'm not talking about this. Go away, okay? Another day, another programming language. Smiley face. Cakes, got a new shirt. I've never seen this one before. Did your wife buy it? No, I actually got it for free from the husband of my wife's sister. So I don't know what that is called, but yeah. He doesn't use it anymore. So he was like, do you want to use it? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Oh, wow, that's it. I just link this DLL. Please distribute this file with the STL runtime environment. Um, is that it? Don't I have to include code? Where's the code? C++ guys. Where is the code? Are you stupid? Do I have to get the source code too? I'm pretty sure you have to get the source code as well. Why would you? You can build it if you want. But you can also link the DLL. Check the develop. No, listen. No, 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 no. This is already fucking triggering me. The fuck triggering me! Download the source code first. For most of them. How to install, depending on your platform. You will need to download... Oh my god, this is annoying already. Oh my god. Jesus Christ, this is ridiculous, man. Yeah, it's typical C++, I'm telling you. Extract all. Yes. You know, this is why I like playing games more. And I just write my own libraries to do shit, you know? Because then I don't have to deal with this shit! Oh god, how did this turn into... Me in downloading SDL2. More package you see make than the other system. Yeah, that, that doesn't doesn't make it good, brother. Make your own build system, yes. And that will almost always include CMake. And that will quickly be the common denominator if you include multiple projects. And if you need a library that's pre-installed, the chances of it having a fine CMake script or config CMake script are excellent. No, it's dog shit. Cause it's slow. You dumbo. Okay, I should be should be aggressive, okay? It's stupid! Doesn't make it good. Gotcha, bitch. I get I'm pretty sure it's include, right? So I would assume. I would assume, right, I would assume that we take the include, uh, why don't we try this, right, we take the include, right, let's make a new folder, SDL2, we need include, and we need the DLL. That's what I would assume. Cause we need the source code. You take everything in the SDL, release zip, and put it in its own install folder somewhere on the system. Then you tell the compiler where the SDL path is. So like... <sighs> These people and their fucking brains, they're fucking so fired now, but they can't do the simple step of making a fucking download button and say, DOWNLOAD THIS AND THAT'S IT! WHY?! Oh my god, how can people be so smart and stupid at the same time? Listen, listen. What's triggering me is the following. There should be one file that I download, not two. It should be one package that I download, okay? Okay, it should be one package, not two. So what am I supposed to download here? Because it's telling me that I need two. 
Download the source code. Holy shit, this is so such a dog shit fucking documentation. It's insane, man. Fucking insane insane. <sighs> you remember me, a German guy in the 40s? I'm scared. You need to learn to read. Okay, what am I supposed to read, bro? Come on, tell me. Tell me. What am I supposed to read here? To install SDL2 varies depending on your platform. That's already dog shit. You need to download the source code first. For most of them, unless pre-built binaries are available. Okay, then I click on download source code. Gives me to this page. Building and installing SDL2, including how to obtain pre-built binaries in this case, is covered in installation. Then I go back here. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. SDL2. The source code of the latest release is here. Click. I click on it. I've been, uh, I've been brought to. I they bring me to this, and I'm like, okay, so I guess SDL2 is right here. That's what we downloaded, and then I download that. That's this part right here. I click on it. I actually I copied it over, but uh, and then I see this, and I know from experience if I want to code in uh, SDL2, I need to include a directory as well. So this is missing an include directory. I need to link and include. Okay, so I'm like, okay, fine. We have the source code here. Absolutely not, we don't. We have a DLL here. Okay, and then I'm like, okay, fine. Then I download the source code, right? Which gives me, did I ex extract it out? I'm such a fucking dumbass, wait. Right. I took this include directory because usually this is what you include in your project. Clone and build it, what's the problem? Why would I need to fucking build a thing if it has or it should already have a pre-built package for me to download? This is why C++ is so dog shit. This is the one thing that is so dog shit about C++, you know? Because these, these people make such amazing libraries, but then when it comes to ease of use or ease of adding it to your project they completely like they go two header one header it's so dumb it should be this is what you download and has everything you need you don't really need the header files well okay so but what if i want to like code with sdl right i want to code i want to have code completion i want to take a look at the source code to know what i'm supposed to do because usually when you're coding and i'm pretty sure i'm not alone right when you have this function that is let's say about sdl2 you want to take a look at that function to see what are the parameters and what does the function maybe do require right and so you probably need source code to aid you in developing i would assume right unless i'm the only person in this world that uses that i don't think so i think mostly everyone does that right so them releasing something if you want up to the minute bug fixes and improvements no i don't no i don't i want one package to download i just checked it the development vc zip has what you want Brother-in-law what is what it's called. Okay, J. Leo, thank you. So the development zip. Okay. Okay. So we, I guess we downloaded the wrong one. Fine. Extract all. Let's see what we get. I'm pretty sure it has a CMake script in there. Yep. We don't need that. We need include. There we go. See, include and lib. 
And the lip is this one right here. Yeah, okay, so that's what we need. Awesome. I will probably make this a little better. Put it right here in the lip. I don't need those. Right, I would clean this up a little bit. I don't know if we need all of those. I would assume these two don't are not needed. And then uh, docks. I don't think we need the docks. And CMake is... Okay, goodbye. But we would probably... I don't think I want to have docks. I need those, yeah? So, like, that is what I was expecting, right? And then I guess we could call it SDL2. I don't really need the version. Right, and then this one, if we wanted to add that here. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a header. Now, I would probably just make it like that for me. Then SDL2 doesn't need lib anymore. And include is here. And do we have like a main SDL2? Probably this one. But I guess we do it like that. Okay, let's see. Now that we have this... If, we, if I wanted to link this, right, and add it to my script, I'm pretty sure. Let's do it for Windows only. Okay, we need to link. Oh, what is it called? The sdl2.lib. Right, and then we need to include third party. Let's see, can we link? SDL2. It seems like it linked SDL2. Could be wrong. Let's try this again. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, wait. It's complaining about free type. I need to get rid of these free type things. But it looks like SDL2 was. Include it. Let's see if I can use it. Just some test. Does it find sdl2.h? I'm pretty sure I have to include that, right? sdl2 and then... I'm pretty sure you have to include sdl.h, right? Let's see. Or am I doing something wrong? File not found. Okay. How? SDL2 SDL.h I did do that, right? Is it not including this? I'm including third party. What am I doing wrong? What is wrong here? Let's look at the compiler. Let's see. Uh, file not found. Maybe I'm not including it in the game. Let's see. Oh yeah, the game doesn't... The game doesn't have the lips. I can't include it in the game. Yeah, yeah. So I would have to do it in main. Oh, excuse me. Uh, building main. Yeah, it does build main. So I could... Wait, linker. Failed. Clang plus plus. Fatal error. Entry point must be defined. Oh, this is some... some pretty sure this is some stupid SDL2 entry point bullshit, right? SDL2.h uh, okay, so there's gotta be a hashtag no define entry point. Yeah. There's gotta be... Oh, fuck off with the pop-ups, man. Piss off. Uh, 
There's gotta be a define. SDL main handled. Oops. It's gotta be this. Right? Okay. Yeah, see, like, okay, so, basic... Why now? Someone set the door. Is it hot or cold? Well, it's starting to get cold because I barely have anything left. <gasps> Ah, oh, you can't use it. Wow. What? What the fuck was that? Did you guys see that? What the fuck, huh? Wisdom. Wisdom. Hi. <laughs> he spent 300 million on money. Ah, oh, you can't use it. Wow. What? What the fuck was that? Did you guys see that? What the fuck, huh? Wisdom. Wisdom. <laughs> anyway, so what I was trying to do with this, now I have STL2, I guess. <sighs> Essentially, it should be, it's not perfect, but it should be as easy as Link. I drank a potion, actually. Oh, come on. Fuck you. I do I have to post this? Potion! Fuck you, bitch! And fucking press the fucking button! You drank a fucking potion, but you didn't do shit! Mm. <laughs> Fuck you! What is run drive? Stop! I pause yeah, donations. Close it. I pause it. Pause it. Oh my god. It's off. Okay. Anyways, so listen. <clears throat> Essentially, it should be as easy as linking your library and including a directory and then and let's say you already include this directory because it's third party right then you can skip this step and then the only thing you essentially need to do is include it should be that easy and i don't think that cmake can do that because i know it can't because i've tried to do that in cmake you have to do more. And I don't need to invoke the SDL2 CMake script at all. I deleted the CMake stuff. So, like, no, I, I'm totally, I totally disagree with this article here. Why use a modern CMake? You don't. You don't. You just need to know what you need to do. You need the code and probably the lib. And sometimes you only need the code, the single header file, if you're using a good library. Damn, all of this is, a, is in a response to a CMake article you barely read. Read. Yeah, but it's almost over here. Let's other sources. Credits. So, okay, we can read the rest. Uh, we, we read this, right? Make your own build system or use one of the provided ones. That will most likely always include CMake. We read this. And that will quickly be a common denominator if you include multiple projects. Wrong. Just showed that to you. And if you need a library that's that pre-installed, the chances of it f having a fine CMake script or config script are excellent. Right, so I just told you, showed you how easy it is to add a library such as SDL2 to your project. You don't need to have fancy scripts for that. It can be this simple. Around CMake 2.6, 2.8, CMake started taking over. It was in most of the package managers for Linux OS and was being used in lots of packages. Then Python 3 came out. I know I should have nothing, I know this should have nothing whatsoever to do with CMake, but it had a three and it followed a two. And it was a hard, ugly transition 
that is still ongoing in some places. What does it have to do with that? I believe that CMake 3 had the bad luck to follow Python 3, even though the even though every version of CMake is insanely backward compatible, the 3 series was treated as if it were something new. And so you will find operating systems like Send OS 7 with GCC 4.8 with almost complete C14 support in CMake 2.8, which came out years before C11. You really should at least use a version of CMake that came out after your compiler since it needs to know why since it needs to know compiler flags etc for that version and since cmake will dumb itself down to the minimum required version in your cmake file installing a new cmake even system wide is pretty safe you should at least install it locally okay okay no okay so I, there was nothing of value there and the rest no gotcha, bitch. no they're wrong premake or cmake this is about cmake code tv and thank you very much for following and runner as well no i think this is not needed to be honest i think we need something else cmake premake ninja yeah i think it's too much exactly Like the thing about this is that you are invoking your CMake script and then you are invoking their CMake script. Okay? That is the issue. You are loading a script in your script, but you are foregoing the direct st step of just including the directory and linking the library, let's say statically, if you want to. You can always link it dynamically in code as well. But the, the act of calling all of these different scripts just slows down your compila compilation time and it's also more error prone because you have a script doing basically basically the script is doing this oh no you still have to do that yourself but the script is literally doing this and this this is not even i wouldn't even consider this one line of code If this becomes a YouTube video, it might break the dislike red record. Yeah, probably. Well, yeah. Should I try it? Should I turn this into a YouTube video, guys? <laughs> this is, oh, man. How many of you think will, it will be a very harsh dislike ratio on it? Hell nah. Uh, uh, let's not be a pussy. Let's take it like a man. The haters, yeah. Let's take the dislikes like a man. What do you say? You can, but what if you want to build SDL with different flags than the release this too? Or patch it. CMake allows this to be part of the overall build system in a sane fashion. CMake isn't perfect, but you can work with it. Yeah, but this is a what if that is very specific. In the most cases, in most cases, you just want SDL. That's it. You want to open up a window, you want to do some graphics, you want to play some sounds. That's it. In most cases. There's always a what if. But I'm talking about the general sense. The general population will not want to do that. That's just how it is. Obviously, there's always edge cases. I'm not saying that these are everything is covered by this. But I'm saying that you should really take a look at what is actually required to use a library. And then see what you have to do currently to get a library like SDL2 when you're using CMake. Because I, I have tried this. I actually have code, I think, still, that is using SDL2. I think. Let's see. This computer. Oh, God. Am I recording? Oh, thank God I'm recording at least. Oh, I would be so annoying if this wasn't recorded. Okay, awesome. Mm, it is called a Spielentwickler. Where's that? Where's my Spielentwickler? Ah, there we go. Mm, I need to find my original engine. My original engine. Cakesgen? 
see make lists there we go let's try to take a look at this add yeah project add subdirectory set the cmake version uh, c++ standard and then soft uh, subdirectories and i think this is the engine right this cakes directory this must be the engine yes there's another cmake lists file and there we go we link sdl2 then we link the sdl2 mixer we find the sdl package we find that and then was it was that it was that it add library static cakes target include directories include and source yes i think that's it and in order to actually build this properly i have to invoke the i think i still have this right cmake gui uh we could try this where to build the binaries oh god oh god I, oh god it's been such a hassle let's see cakes no it's not cakes it was cakes gin right i think in build right select folder oh god yeah and then i have the cmake install prefix let's say here configure of course yeah of course visual studio is no longer found okay um yeah Oh god, I can't be dealing with this right now. It's so annoying. 2019. Um, yeah. Okay, I, I I can't be bothered with this. Uh, it's VC package using VC package as well. Goodness. Why do you need the GUI? Uh, because I couldn't do it through the command line. I remember having to set some CMake stuff here. I remember that. I don't know. I think it was this install prefix or something. I don't remember. It's a bit weird, but yeah. CMake generates build directories targeting build uh, actual build systems. MS build, make, ninja, whatever, which will then run the generated build scripts. Listen, man, listen, like, I built a sprite once, it takes about half an hour. And I know how long this engine took to build. Anyways, let's, let's just stop here. It's fine. I think... I don't know. I think this is not needed. And instead of like this wasn't even everything, right? If this was everything, then I could still I would still agree, right? But you can see this right here. You see this? I'm recursively grabbing source and C files, right? So if I don't want to do that, then I closed it, didn't I? Fuck, I closed it. Then I have to go into the source and for every single folder I need to include these and the annoying part was that I had to find the packages for those as well if I needed them which was really annoying like this is where it became annoying this is what I had to do in CMake it's crazy just Anyways, yeah. I don't know. I think it's tedious. Is CMake too complex? It's too... I think it's too complex, yeah. It's annoying to use, 100%. Things like CMake or any build system are, the, are there to allow consistency across multiple machines when you're working together on a project, especially on CI/CD. I'm a little late to the conversation. Just came when you said you didn't understand why you would need CMake. You don't need to list all the files. What you have there is a very cumbersome way to use it. Yeah, I know that. I know that. Um, but you can you can also glob the files, but that is slow. This makes me excited to start work today using an engine. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Awesome article. Um, 10 out of 10. 
Denkst du noch auf Simei Kepper? Oh, das Dings. No, no. What you don't like CMake and Pack Config and no package manager and no, I hate that. Fucking hate that shit. I hate CMake. <laughs> True. Mm -hmm. True. No way. Tiger Beetle? Nah, I don't want to do another Primogen React, but I guess we can take a look at the Tiger. What is this? I don't even know what Tiger Beetle is, bro. I think I'm not smart enough to react to this stuff. Also 40 minutes. Uh, this is the... Wait, where's the original article? Where's the original article or the original video? Eh? Eh? It's a database in Zig which you hate. I don't hate Zig, but uh, I guess he forgot to link the original article. Oh wow, how did he do this? This is cool. Look at that. How did he do that? Do I have that too? Wait a minute. How did you do that, bro? I need a video of mine. Show up, please. Come on. Ah, there we go. <laughs> this is when I was still excited. Ah, okay. How is it only two? Oh, I see. It links those at the... Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. It's a live presentation, not an article. Oh, I see. Yeah, I, I guess... Listen, like, I didn't try Zeke long enough to have an opinion, I guess. So, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, can't react to this. That's okay. Blizzard locks you out of your account if you don't agree to the new terms. Really? This is dog shit. Day. On this channel for many years I've gone over how many manufacturers try to obscure certain terms of the sale. When it comes to right to repair, you may not know that many of the items that you're purchasing are fundamentally unrepairable in a way that older items were. Even this Sony camera that I'm using to record this video has a website where any man, woman, and child on earth can purchase parts to it and can also find manuals to it, which is not something you see with many modern devices. You don't know that you are locked out of the supply chain necessary to do repairs for many of these devices until you actually buy them. It's not something that's mentioned on the box or in the brochure. And when it comes to many modern devices, you also see companies changing the terms of the sale after the sale. It's not just that they're hiding something pre-sale, it's that they are actually trying to change the terms post-sale. This is something that I went over with Roku recently, where they decided that they were going to go out of their way to send a message to everybody's television, forcing them into forced arbitration. And if you did not click agree to this terms of service, you would not be able to use your television. So you would get a notice that looked something like Who's this. Who's watching television still? We've made an important update. We've updated our dispute resolution terms. Select agree. You may note that there is no button to disagree, which is actually by design. And if you were to try to hit the button on your remote to switch over to the HDMI input, you, like, you, you couldn't. You couldn't. You couldn't change inputs. It actually continued to use the television you bought until you agreed to these new terms that were not present when you purchased the product. And this is something that's becoming very, very common nowadays mm -hmm. with many companies. It's not just enough to screw you up front. They have to F you afterwards as well. And this is something that Blizzard appears to be taking part in as well. And again, this is a serious problem when you I'm purchase any product or service that requires internet connectivity to work. This. Anytime you purchase something that requires internet connectivity to work, they can take away features and functionality after the sale and more importantly, they can change the terms of service 
anytime they want after the sale. Mm. Because as long as your device connects to the internet, to their server, and you can't stop it from doing so, they held you hostage. So let's go over this with Blizzard. This is a very interesting little change in the terms of service with Battle.net that many people are being asked to agree to. So this really? is from the Blizzard end user license agreement, and I'm just going to read what a viewer said over here. I guess Blizzard has gone the way of Roku and Sony. They force you to agree to their new terms and conditions, or it just signs you back out of your account. And apparently you don't own any of the games that you purchased from them, and never did. Now, this is, again, this is an interesting one. So they have this new end user license agreement that you can see as of March 21st. This, uh, this agreement contains a binding attribution agreement and class action waiver in the section titled Dispute Resolution. This agreement affects your rights with respect to any dispute between you and the Blizzard and Blizzard and may require you to resolve disputes in binding individual individual arbitration and not in court. Please read the dispute resolution. You must be hereby confirm that you are an adult legal age. You thank you for your interest in Blizzard online gaming services. I do not read anything. Wait, what is this? If you do not agree with all of the terms of this agreement, you may not install or otherwise access the platform. There it is. Holy shit. <laughs> There's another reason not to buy any... Wait. What if you buy, let's say, Diablo 4? What if you bought it on Steam? Does this have to do... Does this affect Steam too? I don't think so. I think Gabe is like, hell nah, brother. Not on my platform with this bullshit. Right? It doesn't affect Steam. It's only, probably only affecting Battle.net. Let's see, Battle.net. Do I get this? I haven't used Battle.net in a few days, so I should get this, right? Yeah, you can update, that's fine. Yeah, you can update. God. Doesn't Steam just open Battle.net? I don't know. I don't have it on Steam. Would need someone that has it on Steam. This is not legal in Germany, actually. Just suit them. Battle.net. Re yeah, okay. Rest restart. Okay, let's see. If it's not legal in Germany, then uh, big W to our government. I don't get this. So I guess I don't get it because I'm in Germany. Wow, that's some bullshit, man. Like, imagine, I paid for StarCraft 2. I bought this game a long time ago. I guess it's free now, but I paid money back then, right? What else did I buy? I didn't buy many games because I knew that Blizzard is going to be dog shit, right? But this my brother bought. Wow. So, wow. Well, I guess we can still access this, but this is ridiculous. It's, it's always the Americans that get shit on by this, right? Because the Americans seem to have no rights at all when it comes to this. What is their government doing? Nothing, it seems, right? So I, I guess I don't get this. I wonder where this is. Is this the website? First, and if you can, you have agree. By clicking agree, uh, acknowledge that you have read, understood, and agree to the license agreement. Okay and cancel. If you cancel, it signs you out of your account. <laughs> now, the terms of service here are interesting, where it says, if you do not agree to the terms of this agreement, you are not permitted to, Shitty company. Oh my God. Okay. to install copy and if you take a look at this agreement it's very interesting because it says if you do not agree to the terms of this agreement you are not permitted to install copy or use blizzard platforms or games so this is an interesting one because again this is being sent out to people that already purchased these games prior wow. to these being the terms of sale that Stop need to log on to this stuff, platform man. in order to play their game if they don't hit agree then they cannot play their game so they bought the game when the terms of service were here under these terms, that's how they give you the money. And now in order to access what they bought under these terms, they now need to agree to new terms. And it says over here, if you reject the terms of this agreement within 14 days after your purchase of a game from Blizzard, you may contact Blizzard through us.battle.net support slash en to inquire about a full refund of the purchase price of that game. 
if you purchase the game at retail, your right to return the game is subject to the retailer's return policy. So oh if you God, bought this okay. game at a store and, uh, you know, the, you Back just, to you, pirating, you yeah. yeah. So they're it's able just to change more the terms of Good. the sale afterwards and you can't do anything about it. You yeah, can bought the game at these it. terms. You gave them the money into these, these guys. Terms, they can change the term, to these terms at a later point. You see how this is a problem. Uh, and I, this is one of these things where it just doesn't seem like they thought this through at all, as from the user. And to be clear, there may be a way around this, but the, the user experience of this was obviously not taken into account. No, of course they the, don't. This rapey contract. As I do not agree with the EULA, I cannot log into my Battle.net account in any way. This creates a few issues that have clearly not been thought out by Blizzard. I cannot log into my account and cancel my service. The only way to cancel my service is to accept the new end user license agreement. Agreement, so I can cancel and remove my payment method. I also cannot see the results of my pending ticket with them as I cannot <laughs> log in. This is so ridiculous. So you have to agree because you can't log in to cancel your subscriptions, but you don't want to agree. So you, like it's impossible for you to get away. Like you keep you keep giving the money if you can't agree or if you don't want to agree to the terms of service, because it doesn't let you log in. If you click cancel, you're locked out. And let's say you have two or three uh, subscriptions going, they're still giving, getting your money even though you don't agree to their terms of service and you have no way. You probably have to contact the customer support to tell them, hey, get rid of these. This is, oh my God. Like, what is this company doing, man? It feels like a bunch of monkeys work there. It's insane, man, what they're doing. Oh God. <laughs> it's... Uh, companies might do it anyway because no one sued, uh, sues them sues them uh, for a 49.99 game. No, I don't think anyone will sue them for that, but it's definitely dog shit what they're doing here. Oh, man. Man. See the ticket system. As a result, I have deleted my card on my payment platform so they can no longer take my money. I am glad I did not directly give them my card info. And, and just to, mm -hmm. to be clear here, this is a company that I've talked about a lot on this channel. I talked about them in the LA Fitness video and gym cancellations video. To be 100% clear, I have not been sponsored by them. They have never contacted me. I have never asked them for a discount. I have never received a discount in any of their services because up to this point, I actually haven't paid for them. Uh, this is called privacy.com. What privacy.com allows you to do is you can put a bank account or a debit card down here and once mm -hmm. you have done that you can create virtual credit cards so i can have a different credit card for every Ooh, single merchant that i, I deal see. with so if i'm dealing with a rapey merchant like blizzard that decides they are just going to change the terms of the sale with an asshole after yeah. i have paid them and not even Smart. allow me to cancel unless i accept these new terms i can simply go to privacy.com and i can change the amount of money that that card is allowed to use or i can delete it altogether so when they try to bill me again they will not be able to bill me again privacy.com is a savior for me because there are many websites that have these type of dark patterns smart a dark pattern smart. is a pattern where you can yeah yeah i mean it, it, blizzard probably invented the dark pattern yeah yeah i know someone else did but uh, they embraced it 100 percent. yeah yeah technically cancel uh, but it's almost as difficult as navigating in New York City taxation or government website where, again, like you can get the information you want if you have eight hours to spend on the phone and fucking with the website in eight different browsers to figure out how to get where you need to go. Uh, but it, it's like no, nobody cared to make it easy to navigate. And again, why of course. would you in being able yep. to navigate the website would result in you receiving less penalties because you are more likely to file your returns on time. Uh, this is one of those things where there's really not a motivation or an incentive structure for the company to get it right if you're canceling you're not going to give them money anymore so why do we care about your experience and maybe if we make it hard we'll just milk a couple more months out of you privacy.com is a great service because again at the end of the day i can have different credit cards across all these different merchants and when a merchant decides to do some bullshit i can hit delete now when you look on the blizzard community forums one of the things that you'll read is that most people just fundamentally don't care about this and again one of the reasons we are where we are one of the reasons that we have cars that are able to track everything we do and then report it back to General Motors, who reports it to LexisNexis, who reports it to our insurance company, is because people say, why do you care? You, the reason that we have uh, refrigerators that, again, you can't even get a warranty honored on because it says on the side of the box you that Morgan you're not bitch. able to a class action sue them if they do something wrong like I don't know, let's say deny warranty to thousands of users for a defective product because the side of the box says uh, you're not allowed you know you, you can't do that which is a box that you never see because their own delivery men and installers throw it out before you see it the reason that we live in a world where many items are not fixable whether we're talking about wheelchairs or tractors or consumer electronics is because you have people that say eh, it's not a big deal who cares it's one more lost right but who cares 
And when you just look through this thread, how much of the purge does this affect in terms of being enacted? Uh, you see uh, people saying this is common now. You see the, the, the last one is the one that I found the most interesting here. As if anybody here has the resources to take on Blizzard, just hit accept and play. You earn. Yeah, yeah. So this is basically what Asmogod's been saying a lot. Like gamers like to eat shit. Like these are the shit eaters. They accept all of this bullshit and just move on. Yeah. And this is why they could keep doing it. An important or powerful lump to spend brain cells on this. And at the end of the day, for me, it's not about whether I believe that there is going to be a genuinely, uh, in very uh, societally important reason that I personally sue Blizzard because I, you know, I didn't like somebody was mean to me in the chat of the latest Warcraft game. That's not what it's about. It's about this very slow erosion of rights and more importantly, the expectation that we deal with. It's the expectation yeah. that you not be able to use uh, a court of law. It's about this slow erosion of rights that happens a hundred thousand little steps at a time. It's not any one step that's gigantic. It's just here, be here, be here, be here. To hear, to hear, yeah, yeah. to hear, to hear, to hear. Think about how many things would have been considered absolutely insane 30 years ago that we just accept as normal right now. The inability to install an operating system of your choice on a $1,000 computer you own. The inability to fix the things that you own. The, in the, 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 the idea that your car has the ability to report information to the insurance company so that if they think you accelerated too fast on one occasion, your insurance premiums go up $100 a month without your consent. Google. What are they doing there? They're doing this in America? Really? I never heard about this. They can literally track how fast you go through the internet because your car connects to the internet and then tells them, hey, this guy is America. Yeah, holy shit, what are, they, what are they doing? It's insane. These America guys, man. What the fuck, bro? It's optional for now. Yeah, optional, probably didn't tell you about it, and then you use it anyways, because you don't know about it. That's how it's probably done. Holy man. The car insurance thing is also available in Germany, really? Holy. I have a very old car, so it doesn't affect me, I guess. But it will probably in the future, right? Let's say in 10 years. <laughs> God. Well, no, because my car can't talk wirelessly. You can also do it in Europe. All new cars will send their information to the company. Ah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So I guess I will never get a electric car then. Good to know that. Yeah, this is stupid. Because, you know, I like driving a little bit faster sometimes, you know. Get to places a bit faster. Maybe, you know, maybe. Having the ability to go through everything that you send to their platform, scan it, have people look at it, and then report it to the police because you took a picture of your child for a doctor during a time period when you were not able to go there physically. And again, there are so many things where people will simply say, you know, like, what are you afraid of? You have nothing to hide. Trust me, they're not. A dad took photos of a snake toddler for the doctor. Google flagged him as a criminal. <laughs> Google has an automated tool to detect abusive images of children, but the system can can get it wrong and the consequences are serious. Our best offer, sale and soon. One dollar a week for your first year. What is this? <laughs> what is this in the bottom here? What offer? What are you offering, bro? What the fuck, bro? Spying on you, you're not gonna sue Blizzard. Like at the end of the day, there's just one after another, after another, after yeah. another. And like 10 or 20 or 30 years from now, when companies are able to do whatever they want to us, when yep. we have no privacy anymore, when we have no sovereignty over what we own, we don't own what we own. Everybody's going to say, man, when did it happen? And you won't be able to... That's why we... Pri pri I guess I don't, but... That's why you private, let's say, games, right? Because you own it. You bought it. You want to own it. Where's the box, right? Why is it all virtual now? People just want to own their stuff. I still have copies of old games on my machine, on like an external drive. I still have like this. In 10 years, in 20 years, I can still play this. They can't take it away from me. I know it's on the store. I know it's on the website, but a stupid agreement can't take this away from me. You know, I will always be able to play this. You know, that's why it's so good. You don't have to deal with this bullshit. You don't have to be like, oh, cancel. I can't uh, get my subscriptions out again anymore. No, I just play. Plug and play. 
it's stupid like yeah so that, that's why people private pirate games because uh, maybe they bought and also like let's let's say for me right um in the like very long time ago when i was still a student i had absolutely no money absolutely no money really i could i could barely buy food right and if that so what i would do is i saw a game that i really liked and i thought is this good is this good i would pirate the game and then see if it's good and if it's good i would actually buy and support the developers that's how what i would do and if it was shit then i would be like okay dog shit game not gonna buy it you know and that's that's how i would do it in the past i don't do that anymore right because i don't play many games recent uh currently but yeah i think and that's what drives people to pirate games these types of policies and dark patterns you won't be able to play it in the future probably you cannot install cnc generals if you bought it in 2003 the 16-bit installer they used has long been abandoned by windows probably true but i have it on my system as far as i remember i still have it on my external so like i have this entire thing on i think here games oops i have diablo one Mm, and I think, unless I don't have it, must uh, maybe it's on D. Could be on D. It's nuts. Let's see here. Okay, so I have a gothic one. I guess I don't have it yet. There's Diablo again. Uh, this is good old game Diablo, yeah. Launch. I can launch that, yeah. Let me put this here. Point to any individual instance, because there wasn't any individual instance that was at fault. Rather, it was a slow march towards just not owning anything. Not yeah, but we already know that. Not having any this is what happens all sad. the time. And again, when you look at this, your use of the platform is licensed, not sold to you. And you hereby acknowledge that no title or ownership with respect to the platform and the games are being transferred or assigned. And this agreement should not be construed as any sale of rights. Nothing that you have purchased from this company is actually yours. <laughs> Nothing that you've purchased from many other companies has been yours for a long time. Even if I were to purchase a camera from a different brand than this and anything were to go wrong with that camera, it, can I get a schematic? Can I buy parts easily to it? No. The reason that I got this thing, even though Sony sucks in a lot of other ways, is that 13 years after the purchase of this camera, I could go to their website and again, oh, the price is perfect. It's 35 bucks for an HDMI port, but I can buy it and I can see a nice little detailed 97 page manual that tells me how I can service it so that if anything happens to it, I can have some feeling of ownership over it. That feeling of ownership is something that's being taken away more and more every single day. Uh, you bought something, you bought it under one set of terms, and now they can just change it and take away what you'd purchased if you don't agree to it. 10 or 15 years ago, we would have thought this is crazy. And now it's just like, okay, whatever. Okay, whatever. The majority of people are just going to look at that and say, okay, whatever. And again, it's not going to be until they drive their Chevy Bolt and there's one time where somebody stops in front of them a little too hard. So they, uh, you know, because they're playing with their phone or some bullshit. So I now have to hit the brakes a little harder than usual. And I actually prevent a crash, but now my insurance premiums went up $100 because my car is spying on me. Like that's the point at which people are going to care. They only care when it personally affects them. And the thing that I fear above all yeah. else is that it, people are not going to notice true, that it affects them un until it's too too late and so you can't really reverse it you can't change course you can't stop uh, and, and uh it's kind of depressing anyway let me know what you think that's it for today and as always i hope you learned something uh too many warranty issues with these as we've had with other brands of products is this like uh okay yeah it was a good video very informative blizzard locks you out of your account if you don't uh, agree to the new terms yeah Took people uh, over 10 years to realize you don't own digital games. I find that funny, actually. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous, in my opinion. Like, listen, but I... Uh, there's so many things, man.
Now let's just move on, man. This is a lost cause. Like, yeah, let's not talk about Blizzard. It's that's a lost cause. Let's do some programming. Thank you very much for the for the suggestion, my gets up. I really appreciate it, brother. Thank you, sir. You're helping you're helping me out with this a lot, you know. Anyone that has linked any React suggestions. Even though over it, I didn't take a look at this. Like, listen, I'm I feel like listen, I'm fucking stupid, bro. Like uh, crypto mining is back. Listen, no one really cares. Listen, I'm a, yeah. <laughs> no. I appreciate it nonetheless, you know. Do you expect you will be able to play your stream library games in your retirement? Maybe not, maybe not. But if I can't, I'll probably get them somewhere else. Because I paid for them. Dang, he's still going hard on the right to repair. It's been a few years now, holy balls. Yeah, he is. NFTs, let's go. If buying is not owning, piracy is not stealing. Yeah, exactly. That's what someone else said on the internet, and I think I agree. Yeah, that's that's the sentiment I agree on too. <sighs> well, it will it will only change something if it actually hurts the companies, right? If enough people do it, and it starts hurting the companies then they will stop doing it. Piracy is just borrowing with style. No, piracy is just taking what's already yours. If you, let's say you you bought a game and they take it away from you, I think piracy is, uh, pirating that game is just uh, taking or keeping what is already yours. Like it's no like, like you, buy, you bought something, it's yours, and then they take it away from you. You're like, no, that's mine. You can't take it away from me. Uh, that's what I think. Like, I'm not saying that people should do it, right? But that's the reason why people do it. All right, let's see. Let's get rid of SDL2. I think I did. That's fine. And uh, let's see, what do we work on in the game today? Talk with your money. No original, no orc understands anything else. Exactly, yeah. Uh, the best way to vote is with your wallet, of course. Sometimes people just still want to get a shitty experience because they really like, let's say, like a game and want to do it. It's not always easy to do. Like, for example, I knew that Diablo 4 was going to be bad. My brother bought the game. And I could get the game for 20 bucks. I told myself, fine, if I can get it for 20 bucks, I will play it. But I still gave them money, right? It's still like kind of hypocr hypocritical to do that. But yeah, I feel better that I didn't give them like the full price. My brother did. So it was already there. But yes, of course. Piracy is modern Robin Hood. Yeah. All right. Let's go here. What do we do? Let's get some stuff done. I actually wanted to play... Fuck, man. How long have we been going? Let's do some... At least some coding here. We did change the button, so that's good. So whenever I use an ability... I have an ability here. I can see that button. Also, let me double check something, right? Joy to key. Where, where is it? Weird. It's odd. Like, it looks like my hotkeys of my OBS completely got wiped. Yeah. It completely wiped my hotkeys after I'm uploading JJ to left, JJ to right, JJ to left, JJ pull, show higher text, show high J. Weird. Does it work now? Yeah, now it works. Okay, sorry about that. Looks like, like this works here. 
whatever. Gabe Newell once said that piracy is not a pricing issue, but a server's issue. This guy. I just need to make sure. This guy, right? This guy is a giga chat, seems like, man. Hopefully he never dies. He has to find a way to live eternally. This guy is good, right? The typical sentiment of this guy is that he's a giga chat. Right? Gave him pretty base, yeah, right. Strong. We pirate his DNA. We need to upload his brain to the internet. He's OP, he's a frog. While he's alive, World War Three will never start. Okay, good. We need to preserve him for the future. He needs to live longer. He looks kind of old here. Makes me a little worried. Hopefully he stays along alive for a long time. Okay, bro? Please. Oh, 1962. Fuck, man. He's, been, he's old. How old is he? Ooh, 61. Okay. Yikes. Please stay healthy, okay, bro? We need you. If he dies, I'm pretty sure Steam will go downhill then. Please no! Okay, let's see. What do we do today? Ultimate spreading poison cloud. Oh, we wanted to work on the poison cloud. Okay, let's see. Poison cloud. Let's see, what does it take? It does poison damage. Mm -hmm. Cake's not finishing game before he dies. No, I think I will finish my game before he dies. The important part is, the very, very important part that you might not see is the following. I'm still working on the game. You know, do you have ups and downs during development? Yes. But I'm still working on it. I think this is not enough damage, but we'll have to see. We have poison damage, and I think we need another start that is area. Hey, you is dead. Stronghold music, park, yes. My bad. Yes, sir. <laughs> no way. Gabe will live forever. Cake's not finishing game. So his team is privately owned and he co-owner and the co-owners have the same mindset. Good, good. But do they have the same mindset because Gaben is there? Hmm? Cakes, do you ever use Redis? Did you prehens follow the recent drama drama around it? No, I'd never used to Redis. What is it? And what does it do? And what is the drama? I have not, no. Stat AUE, I don't know, let's say 40. I have no idea, man. Let's see. The ice trap. Let's try to use the ice trap. Ice imbue. Mm, ice trap. Try to find that. Ice shot, ice trap. Cold damage. And it has an AoE. What does AoE do? Oh, 32. Okay. All right. 
Um, not sure why you're opening this. It's totally unheard of, but okay. I think it should be 64. For now. Alright, cool. GG's then. GG's? Yeah. Redis is a sassy product. Okay, what does it do though? Redis, Redis is a SaaS product. Database caching. Okay, I guess I don't have any use for that. Boom. 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 I love this song. One of, this is one of my favorite songs. Poison damage, poison damage next level. <laughs> Let me do AoE. And AoE next level. Awesome. Now we need to change the description from this. Texts. Poison. Poison. Poison cloud. We are slowly but surely making or implementing all of the abilities. Uh, creates a temporary poisonous cloud that deals poison damage. To all enemies in the area. I love this about C++, you know. This is so easy to... Edit. And then let's see. We have where's the area? Hmm. Cold damage AOE. There we go. This is poison damage. Nice. Is it another FOSS? Want some money? Type deal? Zeus Dux? Zeus Dux? Sorta, it's attempt number 2 million at trying to monetize a piece of open source tech by sales chats. Oh, isn't that the same thing about the open AI or was it called Sora that came with these crazy realistic images lately where they took an open source project and then tried to monetize it? Even Elon Musk called them out about it, man. It's a bunch of fucking assholes mm -hmm. trying to make money out of other people's work. Cakes. Hand rubs always makes me grin. I do... The same about nine, mine always turns into a clap, lol. You mean this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that too. It's like some sort of energy release when you're happy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a look at the updated poison cloud description. Did the game like stop or something? Huh? Interesting. Did I like put a break button there? Poison Cloud creates a temporary poisonous cloud that deals poison damage to all enemies in the area. Poison damage 30 to 40, AOE 64 to 64. Okay, now, I'm pretty sure we still have to implement this. Let's turn this into a root node and then unroot some of the other nodes that already work. So restart. I think the check mark should be here, right? Shouldn't the check mark to be to the left? Poison cloud. It has a 20 second cooldown and a 9 second duration. All right. Let's do it like this. I think it takes too long. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> Look at this image. Oh my god. <laughs> That's my poison cloud. Ship it. <laughs> yeah, I changed the renderer, you know, from Vulcan to OpenGL. This is the result. <laughs> oh my goodness. Holy lul. All right, and they don't take damage, of course. PNG Cloud. All right, now how do I... F11, I guess? I need to put it to the left so we can see the result. We can edit this, right? Let's put myself to the left. Looks poisonous. <laughs> it definitely does, yeah. I hate searching with this poison cloud. Uh, the real boo, hello there. Trying to find something in this ginormous function of active abilities. Stats. Okay, this is the important part. We need those to get poison damage. Uh, excuse me. Oh. It deals AoE damage based on, yeah, the ability stats. Wrong. It should deal based on stats. That's number one. And this is where we draw... Am I so out of touch? Yikes. No. Zeus, you just subscribed. Big tick support thank you, sir. one years. Thank you very much for subscribing, bro. I really appreciate the support, man. Thank you. Very generous of you. Gotcha, bitch. Are you building a new game? No, I'm building a tower defense game. I guess a new game that, yeah, doesn't exist on the market, yes. I'm building a tower defense game that is heavily inspired by Bloons, Plants vs. Zombies, Vampire Survivors... Uh, yeah, stuff like that. And uh, ARPGs, skill systems, skill trees. And I'm trying to make it cool and uh, give you a bunch of options while not overwhelming you. That's what we are trying to do. And we are currently working on an ability called Poison Cloud. And I, d I wonder if it's options. Am I so out of touch? No. Alex just subscribed. Thank Did you, sir. Sick support for I appreciate two years. it. Thank you, man. Yeah. Gotcha, Alex, thank you so much for the support, bro. And thank you very much, Half a Heart, for following, man. Do you have coffee? I did have coffee, yes. Um, already. Before the stream. Gotcha, bitch. How much did you already spend on it in terms of time? Mm, about two and a half years. Two and a half years of time. And one year was spent on learning Vulcan and making a game in Vulcan. Basically, the first... Yeah, the first year was mostly Vulcan and learning basic engine stuff. How to do UI, how to draw font, how to learn pixel art. Basically, uh, I drew all of the pixel art pieces myself. No! Shit. Okay. Why? It does have render options. See that? So I'm pretty sure we can just do dot render options. Oh, I see. It's complaining here. Yeah? Why are you complaining? Huh? Are you stupid? Is it options? Ah, it's called options. Okay. I wonder if I can do uh, transparent. Does it work? 
If it works, it will immediately chill. Don't think that works. Doesn't look like it did anything. Am I so out of touch? No. Mr. Elmido is gifting one subs to the community. Holy shit. Mr. Albida, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for the generosity. You are too generous, my man. And the real boo, thank you very much for following. Amazing. Well, I will be watching your stream from now Code on. Gree, my man, thank you for $3. Here oh, you man. go. Have more coffee. Bring thank don't you. help back. Enjoy. Bring don't help back? Was it uh, stupid retard? Don't help. Uh, don't help. Uh, uh. I don't think I have that sound anymore, bro. Let's see. Uh, didn't I? Uh, where was that? No way, it's in binary, debug, blah, blah. Resources, sounds. A, B, C, D. I don't have, don't help, bro. You have to ask TCAP. If TCAP gives it to me, then yeah, I give it, uh, I guess I can turn it back. It was so annoying back then. TCAP, GitHub, IO, don't help. Big retard. <laughs> I know why I fucking got rid of it, man. It was annoying. Big retard, uh, don't help. Uh... How do I save this? Sheesh, yeah. Fine, you get it back. You just used pay to win and got it back. There we go. You're happy now. Additive blending doesn't do anything either. Wait, that's the bubbles. Wait, it's the bubbles. I'm stupid. The cl cloud is here. I'm an idiot. I don't need to do that on the bubbles. I need to draw this. Yeah. Oh, it's a rendering options here. Wait a minute. Eh? Transparent. Let's try with transparent first. Oh, wow. It doesn't... Re re wow. It doesn't look bad at all. Lol. I wonder if additive blending is even better. Lol? Oh, it does! Look at that! What do you guys think? It already works! Let him, let him use it. Come on, use it. Holy shit, they won got one shot! They got one shot! What the fuck? What happened? I think the poison cloud is a little too powerful. <laughs> what happened, man? First try. I think it does AoE damage every frame. Which is why it's OP. He made the engine? Yeah, I made the engine myself. Yep. Instant death poison. Eh, it's a little bit too OP. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Goodness. Guys, um, is anyone in chat allergic to nuts? And I'm not talking about these nuts. I'm making, I mean the, the real nuts, you know? Like, uh, what is it called? Hazelnuts. What else do, do we have? Hazelnuts? What is another nut? 
I love nuts. No, like, uh, is any one of you allergic to them? Can you eat them? But uh, like peanuts, yeah, peanuts are not nuts. Almonds, yeah. So like, cause I think I'm allergic to nuts because one time I ate a nuts package and my, um, where I breathe through, what is this called? Well, what is this called? Where you breathe through when this um, thickens? And you can barely breathe. My throat uh, swole. And I could barely breathe. Um, that happened one time. But it was uh, like some weird nuts package that probably had some weird nuts pieces in them. Because I was eating hazelnuts there and I could eat hazelnuts in the past and it was fine. That's concerning. And so that was one time. And then uh, more recently I ate... Mazepan? I don't know how these names work. What is it called in English? Almond paste? Mazepan? Speech? How do you say that? Uh, Aussprache? In English? Marzipan. No, that's German. Like, what is this in English? We call it Marzipan too, is it pronunciation. Ah. Thank you. Marzipan. Ah, marzipan, okay. I ate that and I got a headache the day. So like I got, and I got random headaches in the past. Maybe it is all related to nuts. So that's why I'm asking, is anyone in chat allergic to nuts? And do you get headaches when you consume them? Have you like tried that? Marzipan is literally just almonds and sugar. Yeah. So I'm assuming that I'm allergic to those. Usually nut allergi allergies are super hectic. Hmm. Okay. Aren't they? I don't know. Don't know. Long con these nuts joke incoming. Cakes have you tried nut milk? In the past, but I don't drink it anymore because I think it's just over expensive bullshit. It's over expensive water with a little bit of sugar and flavor. That's what I think it is. It's dog shit. I don't buy it. It's unpopular, but that's my honest opinion. Okay, I'm trying to find the latest ability that I implemented, which was the fire stuff. It's called, I think... Oh, it's a damaging area, right. Uh, maybe rain of arrows. Let's try rain of arrows. Ice wave, ice trap. Oh, ice trap could work. We have radius. We need that too. Draw the effect, yeah. Healing circle, poison cloud, there we go. So we definitely need the radius here. But maybe I should just get... Wait a minute. Get AOE radius. Stats, get ability. Ah, aha, okay. That works. Rain of Eros. <laughs> Marzipan is literally just better safe than sorry. So like what I wanted to try to do is buy another like Marzipan sweet and then eat that and see if I get a headache again. Because the headache that I got on that day was just de debilitating. It was so crazy. How about we set this 2.6, make it a little bit more visible. And then what I want to do is poison cloud that is for me is green. And then poison cloud that is from the enemy is red. Because I don't have... Or we change the color here. The bubble color a little bit. Because this is more like yellow. Maybe I make the bubble color from the poison cloud a little bit more... Like different. I have to have different indicators. Because some will use poison cloud. Some enemies. Some enemies. 
You get migraines now. Oh, you get migraines now, right? Where you get an aura, your eyes go weird. I get migraines from eating a lot of nuts, maybe related. I don't know if it's related. I'm just thinking. I'm allergic to a combination of brinjal and curd. It makes my whole body itchy. Well, that sucks. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out where it comes from because some days I have absolutely nothing and then other days I have a headache and I'm like, where's the headache coming from, right? Because I'm not changing my behavior and what I'm doing. I'm just eating something different. So I'm pretty sure it comes from the food. I'm just trying to isolate the food so I don't eat it. Because sometimes you eat some food and there's, let's say, some nuts in the food and you don't know about it, right? Fuck, I need to go to the bathroom, guys. Shit. AUE radius. There we go. Where's the AUE radius coming from? We need to get rid of this. Oh, I see. We already used the AOE radius. Okay. We don't need the radius. Mm, and then I guess. We don't need that here either. What is this? Ah, I see. Mm -hmm. Shit is the verb. You never know when someone puts their nuts into your food. <laughs> when someone puts these nuts into your food. That's what you have to say. All right. It looks like where's the damage? Deal AOE damage here. Poison DPS. Yeah. It should be stats. Get poison DPS. Poison damage. Um, I'm pretty sure I have to multiply that by delta time though. Otherwise, it deals too much damage. And I think I want to do a tick count here as well. The poison cloud ticks. Right now it's probably doing like small dot damage. Alright, let's see. F11 should be full screen. I need to go be right back real quick. When are you switching to Unity? We're gonna make a game in Unity at some point.
<laughs> can you import a Uni Unity game in a website? Yes, you can export the Unity game to a website, then you can upload it as far as I know. Why is the idea on the campfire? Because it's cool. It is a community creation by Nynx. I put it in the game. It's too OP. I don't know what happens, but it, they die instantly. It deals so much damage. Seems like they get... Holy shit. How much is the poison DPS on this? Goodness. Even the boss is dying immediately, right? 0.4. Huh. Okay. What happens here? Mem copy, of course. Yeah. Uh, mem copy happens all the time. It deals damage to the enemy. Yeah. It deals AOV damage. Mm hmm. Over here. Circle collision. Okay. And then it attacks. Ah. I see. I see what it is. What we need to do is, uh, where's the poison damage here? Over here, this is using, yeah, if we do, if we take a look at, oh, I hate, I hate this mem copy, right? It's so annoying. Every time it goes into this asm file. Essentially, let's find, there's no physical, actually it does physical damage. Oh, I see. Huh. I see now. We are not supposed to take the physical damage into account here. So this is a special case. But let's continue, F10. It does physical... This is where it is probably failing. It does 24 physical damage every frame. If we run at 60 frames per second, that is 24 times 60 damage. One every second. We don't have fire damage, we have cold damage as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I see. Lighting damage, and then we have poison damage here. Which is 30. Yeah. And then in total, we deal 62 damage every frame. Mm -hmm. All right, let me see damaging area. How do I do that on the damaging area? <clears throat> Damaging areas, I have one animation time, animated sprite, tick rate, there we go. Here we have the tick rate. I think I want to create a damaging area that is completely offset from the duration. Then we can just do a tick rate and give it a dot DPS. Yeah, I think that's the best way to do it. So these damaging areas are basically just pools of AoE, round circuits of AoE that last for a duration and they tick every 0.5 seconds, for example, and then they deal damage based on how much damage they do. And uh, I think they... Damage types, let me find that. Aha, so I have to specify which ability deals what type of damage. So, for example, damage types on ability Poison Cloud obviously deals poison damage. There we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, we could already 
initialize it like this, right? This works. Whoops, what did I do here? We can do the same thing. And then we only do this code once. <laughs> Cakes, do you maybe smell something? What do you mean? No, I don't. Hmm? All right, let's make this happen real quickly. Poison cloud. We don't do this. We get the poison DPS. Let's mark this as A. Let me think. Uh, the other one was burning arrow. Yeah. Burning arrow, target stat, no. Is it burning arrow? Projectile. Let me find that. Hmm, there we go. Okay, we need to generate one of these nuts. But how do I how are they drawn? Transparently. I wonder if I can give it options on how to draw the damaging area. Give it rendering options. I think that's better. Now I have control on how they are drawn. And let's figure uh, which. Over here. I want this to be transparent, for example. Yeah. Okay. And then for the poison cloud, we want to create a damaging area. I see. So what, what we do here is if uh, the active ability is not triggered, if it's not triggered, then I want to trigger it by creating a damaging area. Oh no. Owner ID is active ability dot owner ID. Yeah, and the ability active ability dot ability ID. Target components. And the origin is the. Uh, Target location. Yeah, the radius is AOE radius. And the sprite ID in this case is uh, the poison cloud. <coughs> And then for rendering options, we want to do filtering and additive blending. 
And then we just have the dot DPS, which we get. Oh, we also need a tick rate, right? What is the default tick rate of damaging areas? How many times a second do you tick? 0.5. Okay. So if I get the poison damage here, let's see, poison damage. Poison DPS would be get poison damage from the stats. And then I multiply that by the tick rate. So float tick rate is 0 0.5. F, multiply that by the tick rate. Or, like, what does it take in? Is it actually the damage or the DPS? Let's see. If time greater than tick rate, DPS damage per second. Okay, that's fine. So I know now. Which means over here, we don't want to multiply this by the tick rate at all. This is the poison damage, and then we treat that at, as DPS. So basically, the the... We can see it right now. In the description of the poison cloud, it will give us a full duration damage for the poison. I think. And then we multiply that. I'll have to think about it, but we are almost done. Dot TPS would be the poison TPS. And then the dot tick rate is tick Great. Good. Ability duration seems fine. Cool. We have the damaging area. And then we don't need to deal AOE damage anymore. What is this? What is this? This can go away. I really like... Uh, apart from the scrolling issue in this editor, because sometimes the mouse scroll doesn't work. I really like the colored braces. They really help a lot. And then uh, draw the bubbles. Draw the bubbles. And then for the sprite... Oh, I see. AOE radius times 1.2. Hmm. I see. Well, we'll have to see if it looks like shit or not. Also, it does the cloud color here. Can I put that to the damaging area as well? It doesn't have a material. Which means I probably want to add a material to it. But where? I guess here. Hmm. Cloud color. Does the cloud color change over time? No, it does not. Cakes. The ch chat has died off. I know, but I'm focusing right now. It's called flow mode. Okay, bro. There's two options. Okay, there's two options. I'm going to say this once. One. I never program on stream again. Two, I have these sections, okay? Okay, brother. There is no programming and entertaining chat at the same time. If you want to get something done in programming, there's no way that you can do that, okay? I've done this for two years. I know what I'm talking about. Um, let's see. Uh, has components. Oh, yeah, with the range indicator. Let's get rid of this for now. See how it looks. All right. I uh, have to restart the game for this. Just make some errors so we can flame harder. No, I'm just good at programming, you know. That's why I don't make errors. Walks in. Hey, Poppy the Doggo Bar, man. Good morning, bro. Oh my god, it's almost you have to code to get something done. Yeah, right? It's almost like... I'm 
Someone at the door? I mean, they're gonna ring again if it's important. <sighs> That's just how it is, you know. For, in order to program efficiently, you have to concentrate and focus on something. You can't uh, do both. All right, let's see. Give me the poison cloud. Let's see how it looks. Mm, okay, it looks like it's pausing on an exception here. It's just a breakpoint, okay. Come on, use the ability. Um, okay, they do take damage. I think. Or not. Let's try this again. Okay, so it does create this. I wonder why... Interesting. Draw animated sprite. Draw animated sprite? Okay. Oh, I see. Oh, wow, it adds a bit in a bunch of damaging area. That's bad. Now it's triggered. What the fuck have that deer? Hello, Poppy. Picks up a piece of bone of a skeleton. What? Bros... Water? That's the one like Bloons to D6? Yes, exactly. I'm trying to make a game like Bloons. And this is like the biggest trademark of Bloons, this level. So I decided to make that my thumbnail and the first level that I use. So people know exactly, oh, this guy's making a tower defense game. Mm -hmm. I'm a fucking stupid idiot, man. I'm a stupid dumbass. You know what I forgot? I forgot to add the damaging area to the areas. Okay, now it works. The next time he's using a poison cloud. Come on, bro. I guess I have to restart. There we go. Okay, let's see how it looks. Please stop, bro. Can you stop? Oh, wow. Okay, it ticks quite fast. Okay. Let's redo this. Now we have to work on obviously the color and everything from the poison cloud because it really looks bad, right? Yeah. First and foremost, the radius here looks really bad. The bubbles are spread all over the place. So guys, I have a question for you in games typically, right? I think we did that already on Reign of Eros. If if an ability says area, AOE, you see that at the bottom here? You see this? AOE, 64. Does the AOE mean diameter? Or is it, what is it? Is it diameter? Or is it a radius? So you multiply that by two. I think it is 64...
It's radius. AoE is radius. In games. The cloud looks dog shit, man. Why is it so small? Like Chad's penis. I don't understand. AOE is just area of damage, yeah. In PoE, AOE is the area. Yeah, but what does that mean? To the area? Let me get, okay. I'm asking this, by the way. This is my question. Let's see here. If I have a circle, right? This is a circle. And I'm asking if AOE is this part or this part? How about we turn it green and then you guys can see it better. Is AOE say AOE this part right here or this? Which one of the two? The entire diameter, no. Area of effect. I think so too, yeah. Same here. I think it makes more sense to have something like creates an AOE poison puddle within with a 32 meter radius. Will you have something like half a circle cone or so? No, I will only have circles in the game. How do you malloc in your app? Um, like this. Radius, because area is P times radius to the power of 2. Ran away from scary monsters. Hey Poppy, thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate it, bro. You have a good day. Okay, we're gonna let's say it is radius, okay? I think I know why the size of this thing is so small. I need to specify the radius, the AUE radius here. Yeah, DA radius. There we go. This one. Does Poppy get offended every time you call something dog shit cakes? I don't know. <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh, Poppy, do you? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> These fucking softwares! Mm hmm. Thank you very much for following, bro. No! Space, space Drifter. Thank you. What just happened there? Uh, okay, now we... I quickly implemented a new function. Draw animated sprite. This will allow me to draw sprite... Did I build? This will allow me to draw sprites with a certain size and animate them over time. This interface will allow me to draw this sprite. 
Hopefully in a correct size. Hmm. Hopefully it's not done. Hopefully that works. Hopefully it does. And hopefully it doesn't break anything. By the way, are we adding clips to that? I have a feeling we have a lot of new rage moments that deserve a place in this. Oh, I would love to do that, 100%. I'm just so focusing on YouTube clips at the moment, you know. The radius of the war pole became zero while Kekili struggling his radius. What does uh, an inline brace do there? Make a tuple? Um, this one here, or does make that this... Oops, wow, whoopsie. This makes a vector too. Hmm. Looks kind of bad. Also, they... Oh my god, they all take damage. And it ticks too fast. And the damaging area doesn't use the radius. Um, because it doesn't. Yep. Still doesn't use the area here. I thought I did. Shouldn't it use this? I'm confused. It does, yeah. What is the size here? 64 by 64. Confused. I'm confused. Maybe I have to restart. Let's restart. So a shorthand notation, uh, is that a standard feature or newly added by you? Um, this is something that has been there, like I think forever in C++ and C. You brace initialize something and it tries to find a structure that it works with. Do you have any recommendations for resources to learn concepts like window rendering and game development? I'm interested in learning and building something like your framework or my own game engine, but struggling to find useful resources. Yeah, I have one over here. I made an entire video series about making a game in C++, a Celeste clone. It is not perfect, I have to say. And you will probably get further with Raylib. So I might do a Raylib tutorial, like one, one recording Raylib tutorial in the future. But if you want to do exactly what I do, this is it. Cakes, you asked for more rage moments. I never asked for rage moments. That's a PoE guide. Oh! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's this one right here. It's the engine. I'm sorry, bro. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you can follow that too. You know, Lightning Arrow, Dead Eye, Leaker, Starter. That's not bad too. If you want to play some Path of Exile, brother. <laughs> oh, man, that's great. Whoops. Come on, man. Draw it properly, please. What are you doing? Why is the fucking bubble so small? Are you stupid? Oh... Okay, at least it works. Huh. Okay. All right. So it does work. Eh? Huh? 
Fuck, the poison cloud! Oh, it's in the wrong fucking file. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Wait, if it's damaging area radius times two... Then this should be radius times two. There we go. Hex, why are you fighting final boss on level one? It is a tr listen, brother. It is just testing the game, bro. Please try law of 2D. Law of 2D? What is this? Is this another 2D framework to make games in C++? That is interesting. Okay. Aha! We have it. This is the poison cloud. Cool. Now, listen. We are almost there. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Excuse me. We make the bubbles a little bit further inside the radius. Make them spawn there. <laughs> Gooch. <coughs> Excuse me. Fuck. Ooh. Almost died. Mm. Commit and push immediately, and then go wagon. Love it. Love it. The poison cloud should have color now. Yeah. Hmm? <gasps> it works. Uh, the AOE. Now the AOE radius, like, mm, yeah, that's a bit odd. <clears throat> I feel like that's a bit too high, isn't it? So how do we do that? I guess it's trying to check if Activate. it's colliding, right? We have circle collision here. Yeah, I think it doesn't work very well yet. So here's a question I have. Thank you very much for following. What? How would you guys do this? Listen, I have a an AUE radius, right? Let's make this again. Let's say I have an ability, right? Let's turn, make this red. This is my... Or well, let's, let's make this green, right? This is my poison circle, okay? And let's fill that with like a lighter green. This is the poison circle, okay? Um, and now I have an enemy that looks something Bad like this. Burn pro proliferation. Not taken, a, not, 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 uh, not, not even close to me. No, ah! Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Very funny. Listen. Very important question. So, let's say this is an enemy, right? I'm trying my best here to make him walk. He's walking in this direction, right? In in this general direction. So his and his box since this is is a, the, 
Since this is a 2D game, he has a collision box that looks like this. Okay. This is his collision box. Okay, collision. Box. Okay. Should now the question is the question should he take damage or not? That's the question. Why do I ask that question? Because it does look a little bit weird, right? In my opinion, in my humble opinion, there should be a collider here at the bottom that is tracking his position. And this should check for collision. This one should do it, this. Yeah, right? So, now I have another question for you. If I make an explosion, should it do the same thing for an explosion? It would feel bad if he didn't take damage. You clearly see the cloud touching him. And that, that feels ass. Go for the yellow. Yeah, but if you're thinking in terms of 3D Christ... The cloud is clearly not touching him. But I see what you mean. In a 2D sense, it is touching him. But about really tall enemies? <laughs> I mean, we have a really tall enemy here. Right? Let me show you. You see how this guy right here at the bottom gets hit? Even those guys here get hit? This guy gets hit. I think the radius is still a little bit fucked. Breakdown to 3D collision boxes. And midsection legs. Would make sense only in a platformer game? So I think we should only make the feet be, or the bottom part of the enemy be uh, checking for collision boxes. We make a circle around where they stand for that AUE stuff. And then for arrows and stuff, we use the uh, rectangular collision box. Make the AUE really small and force it to only land on the pathway. That's what they do in balloons, I think. Yeah, but um, the collision uh, is still a is still a question. For example, no, balloons TD is top down, so it makes more sense there. We can take a look at balloons at this, for example. Uh, unfortunately, not for example. Unfortunately, balloons doesn't work here. The example because balloons is purely top down. This is. Top down, but different. It's like a 45 degree angle top down somewhat. It's like Stardew Valley top down. But Stardew Valley doesn't have much in terms of top up. <laughs> Stardew Valley doesn't have much in terms of collision detection and when it comes to this stuff. It's the same, just different sprites? No, it's not. It is definitely not. It is a different feel. Holy shit, how many get hit by this poison cloud? Look at this. You see how all of them get hit? I think this doesn't feel right. If I have to be honest here. Think about it. This guy gets hit already.
If in balloons they have smaller collision boxes than the whole character, no. Maybe, maybe that could be it. No, damage on head will look like incorrect. Yeah, I think it's incorrect for the damage on the head here. I think we have to take this position here, the bottom position. Place a poison cloud such that it covers only their heads and see how that feels. I can't place the poison cloud myself. Also, I'm a bit confused that the poison cloud is here. Shouldn't it be like here? On the pathway? Interesting. Yo, yo, what's everyone? What's up, everyone? It's me. Hello there, PZF. Good morning on YouTube. Okay, I guess I'll have to think about it. I don't know yet. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Man, the poison cloud really uh, goes big dick. Come on, bro. Place one. Place one. Boom, 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 boom. I like it. Okay. Well, I don't know yet. I think it makes more sense to do the yellow stuff. For this type of stuff. Yo, that game, tra uh, game trash, just play back. Uh, Mango is fun. Shut the fuck up, you little bitch, okay? That's my game. Fuck you. Eat a dick. How about this? It probably doesn't matter. The cloud could look way better, though. Uh. Okay, I'll think about it. Good. What the fuck? What happened? Where did I place this guy? Huh? Okay. Oh, I can place him in between here. That's bad. That's really bad. You have an accent? Are you Korean? You think I'm Korean? Is that like trolling me? He's Chinese. Okay, bro. Alright, we're gonna switch over to Last Epoch now. I'm going to play the game until I die because Path of Exile releases on Friday. And I want to at least get as far as I can with the character. So, I'm gonna switch over to that now. For those of you on, you on YouTube, thank you very much for joining. I'm switching my YouTube account for streaming. I have a gaming YouTube account. I'm still thinking, I'm just gonna, I guess, do I leave it on? No, I'm switching over for now. So I will see you all on YouTube tomorrow. And for those of you who want to join on the other channel, it is Cakes TV. So bye bye, YouTube. See you tomorrow. Thank you very much for joining. This was the programming session for today. I will be